Welcome to the Find Your Voice, Change Your Life podcast with psychologist Dr. Doreen Downing. Listen in as Doreen interviews people who felt they didn't have a voice or who suffered extreme speaking anxiety. You'll hear stories about how they struggled to speak up, what they did to find their authentic voice, and the confidence they now feel to speak up and make an impact. If you want to get started right away to find your voice, download Doreen's free 7-Step Guide to Fearless Speaking at Doreen7Steps.com. And now, here is Doreen. Hi, this is Dr. Doreen Downing, and I'm host of the Find Your Voice, Change Your Life podcast. Each week, I invite guests who have some story to tell about either not having had a voice or struggling with public speaking or in some ways feeling like they needed to go through some kind of transformation to be able to express themselves fully and confidently. Today, I get to speak with one of my friends, Billy Atwell, and Billy has his own podcast, so make sure and check that out, Unshakable Confidence, and I've been a guest on his a couple of times already. <laughs> And Billy also interviews people like I do to bring out the real story, not just uh, how you recovered something, but actually how you struggled with it. Because I think that's what most of us want to hear is that it is possible to go through some kind of difficulty, find your way through, and then be able to find whatever it is that you're looking for, like fulfillment, probably, <laughs> in some way. So welcome, Billy. Hi, Doreen. How are you? Oh, I'm so happy. I know our conversations always open up to oh, realms, deep realms. And that's what I love about our, our togetherness. I know, you know, um, I, I had to find some free time to come on your show, you know, just my life has been busy. But you know, I entered my sixth season and I've been sort of reflecting on six years of podcasting and hundreds and hundreds of conversations. And you, back when the show used to be called Fear Not, uh, you were like on on the very first year. I mean, we've known each other for a really long time and we've had multiple conversations. And I was talking to someone the other day. It's like, it's very rare when you get to see someone because you were still struggling with your fear when I first met you, you that was the point was like to share what fear you were going through and, and what were you doing to get through it. And, and here you are now you're totally doing your own podcast. And, you know, I just, I find it fascinating and blessed that I've been able to see growth in another human being in such a, oh. I don't know, does that make sense? It's just because oh. sometimes we don't really get those experiences. We see people they are sort of trapped in their narratives and we don't really get to see people grow so much. Um, and I don't know. So thank you for that. Yes. Well, yes. Also, sometimes we see people who already achieved and we don't get to see the journey. And <laughs> I'd have to say that you've been one of my mentors. Uh, I used to listen to Fear Not all the time because I got lots of uh, tips. And now with unshakable confidence, it feels like that's kind of your journey too, going from fear to confidence and helping people to do that. But I just want to say today, uh, I was interviewed on another podcast, and I referenced something that I learned from you, and I use it all the time. Uh -oh. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? I'm curious. Well, it's going to be for my listeners, it's going to be very important because that's my message. Face, and it's about facing fear. Yeah. Embrace, and that's about embracing fear, not running away from it. And replace, which means having strategies or some way of finding your voice. So, right? Face embrace yeah. replace yeah that's yeah. yours yeah <laughs> yeah it's nice to see that you've made that your own uh wow that that's well that made my day thanks <laughs> that i've had an impact um you know it's funny you know it, it's and i'm sure you've experienced this too it's like sometimes we don't because we're on a mic we're just talking usually to another individual and we don't really have a sense of how much impact we're having um, by just using our voice and having the courage to use our voice and to um, 
allow others to feel not alone, that they're not the only ones who feel stifled or um, a slave to fear and thinking that they can't express themselves in whatever way that that needs to be expressed, you know. Um, so that's, that's nice. That's nice. What a nice thing to do in the afternoon. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So it ripples, Billy, you know, yeah. your message, my message, our environments where we invite people like a podcast to learn. So to come back to you, because you have a story uh, and it has to do with your own struggle about being more of who you are today. You know, if we look back on your own journey, maybe begin with some of the early struggles that you had before you became a podcast host. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, again, I think maybe because it's the sixth year or of doing the show and I've come so far and I'm in another evolutionary period in the show, which has always been reflective of my own, like you said, my, it's been, it's a documentary of my own personal transformation. That's kind of smacked me smack dab, you know, in this, this week, as I've sort of done that, it's like, I, I went back and like, listened to those episodes. And I'm like, who is that Billy? <laughs> you know, I just wish I could go and be like, it's going to be okay. You know? Mm -hmm. um, but where I'm at right now is I'm facing a new fear, a, a different challenge of using my voice. Um, you know, when we met and we've had multiple conversations, a lot of my uh, transformation was around um, being in abusive, violent uh, relationships and dealing with the, uh, fear construct of not being worthy and the the inherited negative self image root that um, like I you you referenced my book the face it replace it embrace it it's like we all have these ancestral karmic patterns and um, nine years ago back in I don't know I don't even know dates time is irrelevant to me these days but it was back in May of 2013 at the end of my uh, second abusive relationship I'd started to notice patterns I had started to be like, I I'm not doing this again. I started to see that it started to click that things were starting to repeat. And I was like, I'm not going down that again. And um, I kind of stood up for myself. And uh, next thing I knew is being thrown up against the wall and strangled to death. So that was sort of the catalytic moment of what became eventually a couple of years later, fear not this exploration of we become what we think about. And that's gone through the journey of getting to the, the negative story that we all have, and we all have them, uh, but dealing with those sense of just worthiness in myself that I'd inherited from my family, particularly because I was raised by women who were also in abusive relationships with alcoholics and all that stuff too. And so these, these patterns, and like I mentioned, you were early on in the journey, um, one of the things that I learned about, uh, we, we're not shaped by our, our genetics, but by our environment was Professor Bruce Lipton. He came on the show in the first year too. And this is where all this came. And so I've really broken free from that. I moved out of that house where I, um, this last summer uh, that I've been in for 22 years that I went through both of those relationships. And I'm kind of in a new environment. I'm standing on my own two feet now. I've kind of dealt with all those negative voices, but then I'm here now and I'm in this cycle again. Uh, and I, I'm not by any means calling that a complaint. It's just, it's now time to face the, uh, the fear that I also grew up with in using my voice as an artist. And so that's where I've been is this concept of, it's still the universal rule. And it's, it's whether you take it from the Buddhist or the Christian scripture or whatever, it's like, we become what we think about, right? That's, no one's heard that. And so that's where I'm at. It's like, okay, so what am I been thinking? What about all these limiting beliefs that are squelching my creativity and that creative voice that's been given to me by the divine to express um, in the traditional realms of creativity, you know, fine art, if you will. Um, and so that's where I've been. And it's just sort of but now I know the process. I'm not afraid of it. I just, I examine my thoughts, everything that I've learned. And um, it's kind of like the, the, the show's logo is a phoenix. And so it's just, I'm on a new level. Um, but the rules are still the same. The actions, the requirements to, for transformation are the same. It's just, I know solidly now how to do it. And so therefore it's just like, 
let's get to work. You know, I'm not trapped in the victim state anymore. It's just, oh, oh, that's right. I'm becoming what I'm thinking about. And look, listen to all those voices that I've been carrying with me since my childhood, which is the, the exact voice, the exact ancestral karmic pattern would be anytime I created something and would show it um, to my mother, she'd be like, well, who would want that? So that literally has been the voice that has systematically kept me from creating, uh, whether I've created uh, entrepreneurial aspects or that's part of the voice that was kept me in abusive relationships because how would I take care of myself? Um, so I'm really much, much more um, aware of that need to really pay attention to what that negative voice is and to turn your back onto it and listen to um, the other voice that is also there too, saying the same thing, which is you are one, you have the power, you have the ability, it's a gift, flourish. There's no, no need to fear. So that's where I've been at. Um, I, don't, I know that was sort of a long answer and I do apologize, but that's literally where I've been at. It's just it just sort of all of a sudden, it's like that part of me that was that nine year journey and everything that kind of came with the show just was like, okay, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have the training wheels on. I'm, I've, I've graduated, if that makes any sense. We go through these things, we got to learn the process, we got to trial and error. And then all of a sudden, it's like, do I continue to act like I don't know? how this world works and how your voice works and it's all alignment or whether you listen to the negative voice or the positive voice because we have choices and then there's no one to blame but me um on which voice i align now i didn't understand that you know at the beginning of the journey and i know most people don't so that's where the show has been going is like i get it i've understand it but the only thing I can teach you is the truth. And it is we become what we think about. And it's just which voice are you going to be listening to the negative or the positive? So mm, wow, you're right so much. Well, one of the things I'm taking right away here is that the journey you've been on in podcasting from the very beginning when we first met is that when you invite people to share who they are, their struggle, their transformation, you get to learn and you've been learning and I've been learning today. Mm -hmm. I'm learning from you. Well, I learned from you a long time ago too, but uh, the whole sense of that your particular evolution has happened by the people that you bring into your circle, bring into your podcast to listen to and what I hear is that you really did listen, <laughs> listen to all the wisdom that you surrounded yourself with. And in a way, it's like not just reading books, we we get to bring in people who <laughs> have real life experiences and can speak about it in a way that not only are we sharing with our listeners, but that we get to learn. So that's one thing I get from yeah. you. Yeah. And the other thing, Thing that I get from you, which I think is really important for the audiences listening. Wow, you just don't get to one point and say, that's my voice. Yay, I found my voice. Now let's go out in the world. It is ever evolving. That is such a huge message. It's not just one voice inside of us. Although the sense that you just said is that, well, we need to discern whether it's negative or whether it's positive so just bottom line you know how do we do that and so that would be something i guess uh that goes along with the face you know i think what you talked about face it at yeah. least we have to face what's going on inside of what we are saying to ourselves because what we are saying to ourselves is a voice yeah we have to face it and really uh to evolve that is we have to come to, we have to wait, awaken from the dream that we've been conditioned, the fearful dream. We're conditioned to believe in the negative voice as being the sole truth of who we are. And until you sort of disrupt that pattern um, and realize that really that you have a negative choice and a positive voice um, and both are equal. And I think this is the other thing too, that I think I would really like to leave with your audience. Cause I remember struggling in the beginning too. I must be positive. I must be positive. And I'm like, gosh, I'm not positive and I'm not, 
I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. I must be doing something wrong. You're not. Uh, You're not. Say more, say more, say more. <laughs> well, um, so I've been reading a lot of William Blake and like Ralph Waldo Emerson. And so right now, um, there's this passage of William Blake where he says, I do not consider the just or the wicked to be in supreme states, but each um, uh, a, uh, a state of sleep that the soul may fall into in its deadly dreams of good and evil as it left paradise following the serpent. Um, and you see this in, 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 in scripture, in traditional Christian scripture, we have this concept that God is only good and there's an evil devil, and it's not. This energy force, and whether you call it God, universal mind, quantum field, you, you know me, I don't, I'll pass lead to God like Gandhi teaches. It's this thing that most people call God, but have a misconception, is that it's all things. And it's, it is the cursings and the blessings I kill, I make alive. And when you let go of the guilt and judgment, or even the superiority, like I must be positive, because it's much more superior than negative. Yeah. That's another part of a trap that I've discovered. It's like, you don't fight with the fear, you don't struggle it, you don't resist it, you just ignore it. Mm -hmm. And then you embrace the new narrative. Um, and you bounce back and forth, of course, as my journey, because you've got to trust in it, you've got to see some evidence of it. But it's, I've really learned that that's also part of the struggle. And while I struggled is because if I wasn't thinking positive, then um, again, I was still attaching my self worth to, well, I'm not thinking positive. So therefore, I'm not worthy. You know, and that's that comes from a lot of traditional Christian theological things that pervade, you know, that just worldwide, I mean, even in other religions, too, you see, it's just, these are the ideals, but you'll never attain them because you're not worthy, you know, and it's like, unraveling all these things and letting go and just being like, wait, positive, or negative. I get a choice. They're both valid. They're both given an equal measurement. You know, it's just what kind of, what kind of consciousness do you want to, to reside in? And that's taken me a long time to understand that, but that's where I am. And that's kind of where I'm at now too. It's like, all right, I am, uh, like Lord Byron said, I am the captain of my fate. I am the captain of my soul until you stop blaming the world. And uh, Alan Watts has got a great quote, right? He's a Buddhist. And he's like, there are two kinds of people. And you either those who see themselves as victims of the world, or those who see them as the world. And it's when you give up the victim, and I was a victim, um, justifiably so, I mean, a lot of abuse, a lot of violence in my experience. Mm -hmm. um, but that all came from the conditioning. And you can't hang on to that and adopt into the new confident consciousness because the two can't blend. There is, it's one or the other. And when you bounce back and forth, that's kind of like limbo. And that's where a lot of torture and suffering comes from, um, as well as just being in your own personal hell. But it's that voice. And, um, I don't know. I just tell everyone, you got to figure it out for yourself because I'm sure, you know, people are like, what is he talking about? But it's like Buddha said, don't take my word for it. Go prove it for yourself. And that's the only way. And wherever you are to start the journey and it'll unfold naturally. That's another, it's guaranteed to unfold if you just engage in the journey. So. Yeah. Well, the, I really get, and I think people are listening to the actual, uh, it's a choice. There's a one extreme or the other extreme. And I'm, I'm ready to ask who's the one who's listening to the positive or the negative. Talk more about that aspect of ourselves. So, you know what I've learned um, in my research? Uh, I don't know if this is a video or not, but, you know, I've, I've read, I've studied in early on Buddhism and Hinduism and, and Christianity and like Joseph Campbell and really what we all are on, if we can just get rid of the concept of like, you know, William Blake says like the good and evil, if we quit fighting that and just see that we're the mask of God. 
and that it's the divine within you, the ultimate continual eternal dreamer dreaming dreams of good and evil, and you get to choose. Um, that's really all that I've discovered. And that's where your power is. It's like, you will dream, you are dreaming, you are creating, right? The Upashan teaches us, the creator created the creation, poured itself into the creation. And if the creation can understand this becomes the creator in the world. And this thing that most people call God is all things. And it dreams dreams of good, it dreams goods of evil, but you get to choose. This is the concept of free will. I set before you life and death, not choose. And that's not easy in the beginning to accept. Um, and it doesn't make you superior, like, you know, Wayne Blake, I don't consider the just or the wicked to be in supreme states. It's just the way this thing we call life on earth works. And it's the voice inside of you that is all things. It's not a good voice and an evil voice. It's all possibilities. Like Buddha teaches us from the stream of consciousness, filter out the positive and your suffering will end. You've got to, all you have to do for your listeners is just be still and see the options and then develop your courage within your divine inherent being and being like, I thank you for that negative option, but I'm going to decline. I'm going over here and I'm going to stay firm to that and it will pass because your hell has come to pass. We don't realize that we are the creators of our own nightmares through those by um, attaching to those negative voices and repeating them over and over and over again, like a prayer or a mantra. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we well, have to change our prayers and mantras. That's all. <laughs> well, what I, where I'm going with what, with my question was that there's a sense of, and you've used consciousness and you've just used divine being, and I call it the essential self, the essence of who we are. Yeah. And that essence to me is not good or bad. It's not positive or negative. It's just the pureness of, of beingness. And that's what you're talking about, I think, is the same thing if whatever we call it, it's the divine. But I think that's where awareness is, that our consciousness is in the ability to look out from essence, look out from the divine, and then making those choices because some part of us has to be making a choice. Yeah, and it's all internal. It's all internal. Um, I really love Rumi. And one of my favorite um, things that's a little bit more esoteric, you know, like Gandhi says, be the change you wish to see in the world. He doesn't say change the world. He says, be, be the change you wish to see in the world. Because when you learn from Rumi, Rumi says, yesterday I was foolish because I tried to change the world. Today, I am wise because I change myself. Because what is, what appears without is really within. And the world, like you said, to look at the world and to examine it really should only be seen as to what am I believing the world to be? Uh, and that may be really super deep for everyone, but that's still the truth. Um, and I cannot not say the truth. And so, you know, again, it's just to see the people in there and they're asleep to the dream or whatever. And then if there's someone in your life that is doing that, all they're doing is reflecting back part of your negative voice. And so instead of engaging in them and uh, fighting with them or blaming them for the circumstances of your life, you examine your own thoughts, your internal thoughts. And as far as I have learned at this point from all the research and from my own using my own life as an experiment during it's just, it's all internal. And if you can just examine your thoughts, and there's lots of ways to help you do that, of course. Um, but it's all it all goes back into what am I believing, right? In Proverbs 23, seven, it says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so does he become. And I like the direction you point people to is to your heart. Yeah. Yeah. And it, that's the portal to the divine. And you also said stillness, get very, very still. And that 
that grounds you in a sense of, I think, a, a more what expansive awareness, deeper awareness. Yeah. When you're still, what you do is you don't fight with a negative thought, you don't fight with a positive thought, you just allow it all to be. And by being still, um, like in the in the Buddhist uh, text that I've learned, the whole concept of meditating and being still is to detach from all possible dreams. Um, it's kind of like the, the metaphor of Jesus being in the storm, everyone's running around going to storm and Jesus is like, he's chill, because he realizes he is the storm and the storm is all things, but he also knows that he's not the storm as well. Like it's not, he's not a slave to it. He's not a slave to the illusion. And so when you be like Buddha or you be like Christ in your meditation practice and you be still, then you're not constantly grabbing towards something for validation or to be. And then from there, like Buddha said, when you realize that there is a buffet of consciousness then go back in but you've got to detach from your addiction to negative thoughts and if you want to go back you're perfectly fine it's god's good pleasure to give you the kingdom of your choice right and this is the part where you can't go around judging people you know um but that's what i've learned to be like to be still means just to detach from it all just enough to get perspective that you are the dreamer and the observer. And then you can go back and play the game with your own free will. And then what do you want to create? So I'd like to bring it back to public speaking and being afraid and struggling with stage oh. fright and trying to apply some of our deeper concepts and awarenesses to that actual somebody who says, well, dreams, <laughs> who yeah. says that they are um, afraid, that they're afraid that people are going to judge them. And I think what you're saying is it's not just whether or not people are judging, it's inside of yourself. You're already judging yourself. I think that's how we apply it to something specific like the fear of public speaking. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, one of the ways that I got over my public speaking, because um, I tried Toastmasters, and that helped. Uh, but I had a lot to say, and I just couldn't get it all said in the three minute time, you know, that's traditional Toastmasters. Um, but I, 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 you know, you could start there for sure, because you got to get up. And there's a lot of times where if you just raise your hand, uh, you don't even have to be a member, you can just go to the meeting. And when they do like their open call to like, speak, you know, you can just raise your hand and go up and then they'll ask you a question. Then you've got your, your three minutes to talk about that subject. That's a great way to deal with that. Um, I personally, after that, I was like, I went the acting route because I was also training at that time before I did podcasting, I wanted to be a voice actor. So that helped me a lot. And people are judging you. That's the thing. People are always going to judge you. They always are going to have opinion, whether good or bad. So, and I know that it that may be the fear, but if you can just be like, okay, they're going to judge me no matter what I do. You know, it's kind of like, I'm damned if I do, and I'm damned if I don't. So why don't you do? Right. Well, the why don't you do it from the people that I work with, the why don't I do, I hear, well, I'm going to make a fool of myself. I'm going to, everybody's going to laugh at me. Uh, I'm going to miss out on the promotion because my boss is going to see how uh, stupid I am. You know, so there's a lot of those kind of projected thoughts, negative, and, limiting self thoughts of what you've just said, actually. Yeah. And they will experience that. They will laugh at you. They will. The point is, is because you're, that's your belief structure, it must come to be. The point is, and like why the show was originally called Fear Not, was in those moments, you've got to get up there and do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Because that's the only way to move out of that thought pattern of they're going to laugh at me. Well, that's the face it, right? That's the face <laughs> it. That's, that's the, you know, when the show was called Fear Not, it was not don't feel afraid. Um, when I read that in the Bible, because in early on in the journey, I was like, what do you mean don't be afraid? <laughs> How am I not supposed to feel afraid? But then when you read the Bible in Greek and you translate the, the correct word, uh, which uh, is phobos, it comes from phobos, it means 
don't, don't not be afraid. It means when the fear comes, don't withdraw and panic. Oh, could you say that one more time? Because that right there is the nugget that I think people yeah. will take from this nice and concrete. Say it one you, more. You will never move beyond where you are in your current negative believing and fear until you stand in the fear and don't withdraw from it. It's it's the show's logo when it came to me in a vision is a phoenix, right? And what is a phoenix? A phoenix must be burnt to ash in order to get to the new level. And that's what fear is. If you can understand fear comes to you at the most critical moment when you're about to crush a threshold into a new level of consciousness, what happens? We feel the fear and we withdraw and panic. And what I've learned probably most from the Bible, especially in those early days, was that's not what the message says. It says when you feel the fear, stand in that flame and you will be cleansed in the sense of fear must acquiesce to you because if you if you act like buddha or jesus when they went through their testing in the wilderness that's the fear cycle that's all you need to know no this belongs to me buddha actually touched the ground and was like no this is mine with all the temptations of fear and self-doubt to get him to move he did not and therefore he ascended and so if you are wanting to be a public speaker, and you have the belief structure that they're going to laugh at you, they will until you get on the stage and do it. And you just have to do it. You're gonna have to take my word for it. You have to. My voice mentor teacher, she called it Gritker, getting ready to get ready. It's a form of procrastination. And fear will get you to stay in and a cycle of procrastination, because as long as you don't stand in fear, you're going to go through this um, karmic cycle. And that's why it feels like everything's repeating. That's why I kept being in abusive relationships, because I was on that karmic negative belief about myself until I understood that when you get to that point, when you come back to the circle, the only way to break out of the circle is to stand in fear and then rise up to the new level. What an image. That's uh, fabulous. I think uh, people are able to relate to that, even though it uh, before because we're coming to the end before we get there, I really that whole sense of standing in it and then rising up rather than getting caught in the circle. Yeah. And I, I know you said stillness, but what can you tell people around how to stand in the fear or move towards it and stand in it? because it, that's where the transformation is, it sounds like. Well, let's let's keep it in, in public speaking, right? So I, I didn't get on stages. I got on stage in acting, and I was doing scenes. There were scenes where I was running around in my underwear, and I was nowhere near. I mean, when you met me, I was still very much exploring fear and very confident. And all I can say is, is kind of just to reiterate, like really pound it into you, all you have to do is get on that stage and you're already casting a vote for confidence. You may not get it in that example. You may have to get on the stage 10,000 times. But like the Japanese proverb, you know, get knocked down seven, fall down seven, get up eight. You must persist in the dream. Um, and that's all I can tell you that you have to experience it for yourself. But I can tell you if you get up, even in extreme situations of performing in your underwear, you know, or being very vulnerable in emotional scenes, that's not any different than public speaking. You get up in front of people, you're going to feel the voice, you're going to feel the fear, but you do it anyway. And then the next time you do it, fear has diminished. It's still there in terms of like, but then you do it again. And then it's just like, and then you do it again. And it's like, and then you do it again, and you're like, and then you do it again, and you do it again, and you do it again. And before you know it, you too will have the experience of like, wait, how did I get here? Where did that fear go? That's all I can tell you. That's mm -hmm. all I know. And I know that through my own personal practice. Um, but again, just to recap, like Buddha said, don't take my word for it, go prove it for yourself. And then you will know, then it will be game over, because then it's just like you said, 
ascension. It's just a never ending story, but then you master how to play the game. And you're like, oh, fear. Mm, I see you. I'm not buying what you're selling today. And it's literally like that. You know, if fear will never go away. Fear will never go away. It's what, how much of your power and belief structure are you giving to it? Because it'll always come to you at those critical moments when you're about to break through into a new level. And all you have to do, and you'll get there if you just do it and fail and do it again and fail until you start failing less and having more success. And then you'll like, you can literally be like, Oh yeah, that's a negative thought. And I know what that negative thought is going to produce. So I'm going to change my thinking right here, right now in the moment. And then you journal or you do positive affirmations and, or you meditate or you visualize, and then you take control You're self sovereign. Yeah. The whole sense of uh, keep on moving into and through fear. It feels like what we're saying, what I would add is that the belief in what the possibility is inside of you and it doesn't get awakened until you uh, take that step towards the fear and we're talking about not just getting on a stage and doing a performance it's in having a conversation with a loved one <laughs> it's yeah. in sitting around at a dinner table telling a story it's uh, raising your hand at a meeting giving your opinion on a project so there's your voice is always with you. And what we're working on, what I'm working on is helping people find the inner strength. And I think that's one of the messages we're giving today. It's all within you, all of it. <laughs> yeah. And if you just do the thing that you're afraid to do, you'll wake up one day doing it like a habit on autopilot. Yeah. Every time you do it, it feels like you you like you said you you put a, a stake in the ground for what is possible and for the strength mm -hmm. because each time you approach it you get stronger and stronger it's muscle inner muscle inner presence muscle building is what uh what we're talking about oh billy can we just go on and on but i i need to come to a close today i know i already asked you to give one closing statement how about one more I know that probably a lot of your listeners are fear is smacking them in the face, right? Going, you know, um, don't listen to what he says or Billy's special, right? We have, we, we see this all the time, right? When, like you said earlier, when we see people who are already at that point and we don't see the full journey, fear is more fear will jump on that and be like, they're born under a lucky star. Oh, they, they were just born that way. You know, when you don't see the journey. So, my only advice is, is that it can be done. I mean, I was almost strangled to death after with the two, two marriages put together, the, it embodied almost 20 years of abuse. If I can do it, you can do it. And there are people who have it worse than me who have found this and have done it. There are people who have less and have done it. So if nothing else today, when that voice is probably approaching you today, the voice of fear saying mm, that'll never happen for you. Red flags, pay attention, because that's the lie. Okay, that's the first lie. And then if you can do that, and just keep doing that, and then, you know, work with Doreen, uh, or, you know, get on that stage, go find somewhere, go join Toastmasters, if you're in, in terms of the public speaking, um, just do it. It is the motion that will cause the transformation. Yeah, the whole idea of listening to yourself, listening to fear, but also the deeper belief and learning how to access the essence of what's within, which is for my message is where your power is, is, yeah. is in your essence. And uh, so let's, let's find your essence so that we can speak from the essence of who you are. Thank you, Billy. Yeah, my pleasure. Anytime. Well, before we go, how do people find you? Uh, yeah, you know, these days I'm just focusing on my podcast, uh, which is Unshakable Self-Confidence, um, Apple, Spotify, all the platforms. Um, 
there is a free magazine at unshakableselfconfidence.com backslash magazine, but um, uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. I'm like I said, I'm in the process of um, really focusing on what I want to do and what I don't have to do and all that stuff. But at least that's just I show up six days a week on the show and that's I share everything. Uh, I don't have courses or anything like that. I don't I don't do that. So that's the best way to find me and connect and and learn more if you want. Good. I, I highly uh, recommend that because obviously just from today, people can find how, how you are filled with wealth. Uh, you're full of rich treasures of information and wisdom. Thank you again. Thank you. Yeah, uh, my pleasure. Thank you for being with us today for this episode of Find Your Voice, Change Your Life. Each person during interviews shares what has helped them find their voice. You can learn from these guests and find your voice so you can be confident to speak up and speak out. And remember to download Doreen's free seven-step guide to fearless speaking at Doreen7steps.com. We hope you enjoyed the show and will return next time. Until then, goodbye for now. <music>